Welcome to the second video. This is week three, third day, third proper day that I get to work on my game, Cthulhu Express. What is it? It's you and your friends controlling a train in the cosmos, and you having to take passengers on board that might not be so innocent. Some passengers might be a cultist. They might try and destroy your train, and it's up to you to get the innocent passengers to their station on time and alive. So, this is the game we're making. So, last week, we did this. We have the ability to add carriages. Only one type of carriage, the passenger carriage, but still, the ability to add carriages. And we did the nav mesh. That was literally a tick box. Took me five seconds. Game development. I want to remove and add passengers. So we've got a little station coming in. It zooms on in, the train stops. And now I want the passengers on board to get off the train. And then you passengers to get on the train. And I want to try and create this loop. So essentially station, station, station. Passengers get off, new passengers get on. Because that's essentially the loop of the game, right? That is the game. Let's get this done. So I wanted to get passengers spawning on the station and waiting to get on the train, which I thought would have been easy, and I was wrong. So first I was just going to give them a random point on the station to go to and wait, which should be the right thing to do. But then I realized because I've decided to get everything outside the train to move and not the train itself, that was gonna make this job a bit harder to do. Because essentially if I give the AI a random point to go to on the floor, and then the floor actually starts moving, the point's not gonna move with it and eventually they will just walk off the platform. So what I ended up doing is once the train actually hits the station, which means the station will stop moving, it will then generate a grid of places for them to go to and wait. This took me a bit to get the math and positions right. I wanted to be able to provide the function that I created with essentially a length and a width of the platform, and then how many locations I wanted generated, and it was essentially just create a grid on that platform for the passengers to go. I probably spent too long on this, to be honest, and could have just have them spawn and go straight onto the train. But I was really determined at that point to get it to work how I envisioned it. And eventually I did actually get it to work and the passengers come out and wait in line for the train. Now all I needed to do was get the passengers onto the train. First I created a simple way for the player to interact with the environment, which just involved on left click, it would shoot out a short little line trace where it would look for any interact blueprints and then call that interact function on that blueprint. From there, I created a small box with the aim of when I interacted with that box, it would get all the passengers on the station to board and take a seat. This was relatively easy using the code I created previously for getting the passengers to take a seat. I just modified it a bit and it ended up working pretty well. So now we have passengers coming on board. Week four, day four, let's just continue developing this loop. So I wanted the player to be able to control the train, moving it forward and backwards, and also being able to stop and start the train when they wanted to. So I jumped into Blender and modeled up a simple lever and brought that into Unreal. Then using my interaction blueprint, I created a lever blueprints off that. One to essentially tell the train which direction it was going, whether it was going forward or backwards, and another to stop or start the train uh, when you would want. So I place these levers into the train and now the player can control when the train leaves the station and which direction you were going. Now all I needed was a way to spawn in the next station and how it's going to handle the spawning system of the level. So this next bit is going to be a bit of a rant of me explaining how I plan on tackling essentially zones, what I'm calling zones in Google Express. This will be areas that will essentially generate chunks if you think of something like Minecraft, generate chunks as the train's traveling along in space and essentially you'll hopefully be able to provide a seed number that I can regenerate the same seed over and over again for testing sakes and things like that. So these are the things that I want to go through, essentially my thought patterns. So first up is everything else moves. So I've already kind of briefed on this uh, in the past, 
I kind of want to go into more detail now and reasoning why my thoughts behind this. The train itself will always be in world space at zero, zero, zero. It will never move. It will stay put. And there's two main reasons for this. One being uh, replication. So it's a networked game. You can play co-op up with your buddies. If you have a train that is moving that you're on 100% of the time, pretty much, I might allow you to go on the stations from here to there. But apart from that, you are on the train. And if that train movement is not smooth, as in if you're lagging because you're whatever, 200 ms or something, and the train's jittering, not a good feeling. So that was my number one reason why everything outside the train is going to move, which will give the illusion of the train moving, and the train itself will stay put. The second reason, which kind of identified when I was trying to spawn AI on the station before you got to the station, was if the train is moving and there's AI on the station, which there'll be passengers on your train, not on the station, on your train, and you tell them, go to your seat, which you'll give them a position of, I don't know, we'll say 50 along the X axis, right? And you're like, okay, well, go back to your seat. So you give them that axis and they'll find the nav mesh, use the nav mesh, they'll make their way back. It's all good. But the issue comes in is if the train's moving, this value here is constantly updating. Which means that if for me to counteract that, I need to take that into consideration, which means this tick of always getting the seat's location needs to update essentially every frame. Rather than if a train's not moving, so that means the position is fixed, it only needs to get it once and then make its way over there. So they're kind of my main two reasons why everything is fixed. I think it'll just be a much smoother experience for the players and if there's any lag or latency, the things outside the ship, outside the train might jitter a bit. Not that big of an issue. Really not that big of an issue. So currently what is happening is we essentially have this master blueprint, which is called the movable blueprint. That's what I currently have named it. And essentially this is calling on tick at the moment. It will move itself in the on the x direction on the x axis depending on the train's movement speed so the train's moving at 50 it'll move 50 along the um the x axis right and then i would have everything and this was my first initial thought is i would have everything outside the ship go off this movable blueprint. So essentially be a child of that movable blueprint, which means that I would have that update code, which will essentially mean any stations and then later on asteroids, meteorites, planets in the distance, whatever it is, will have to be a child of this movable blueprint. Whatever I come up with in the future. Issue with this is if I start adding simple thing like asteroids, right? If I start adding in asteroids, so we've got our train. So I've got asteroids essentially all around. It's just an easy example. Asteroids all around the train. And, and I want to follow, essentially they would all be a child blueprint of this blueprint. Works. That means on tick, every single one of these would move in this direction if the train's moving at like 50 speed. Right. Each one of these would move in this direction. A few things that is an issue with this. One, that's a lot of event ticks that are happening all at once. I can't have this many event ticks popping off. On top of that, all these are replicated, which means they are also hitting the server individually, saying, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, every single frame, right? Telling the clients where they are as they move along. So even though this would work, I feel like I'm just seeing the foresight of it that it would be quite performance intensive. So I'm kind of wanting to deal with it now. And also if I'm just spawning these at random, super hard to replicate again. So this is what's currently happening. Essentially each one of these would be a child of the movable blueprint. 
movable blueprint and be moving on tick on the speed of the train. My goal for fixing this or tackling this at the moment, sure there's a better way, but this is what I have come up with. And my idea around this is zones. So these are zones. This is my theory of what I'm going to be doing. I know that it looks like 21, 22, 23, and 24, but that was meant to be Z1, Z2, Z3, and Z4, representing zone one, zone two. Yeah. So we'll put, say the train is here. This is the train. Okay, so this is where you're currently up to in the zone. The zones will now go off this blueprint. And we the only thing going off this movable blueprint will be zones. Right? And then essentially what I will be doing is we have station and our other stuff, asteroids, whatever it be. And what I will be doing is essentially having on each one of these zones, it holds a, essentially a container of stuff, be it a list of blueprints with a essentially local pause. And that's their position relative to the zone. So it'll store an array of these, there could be 30 of these, whatever. And when this zone needs to get generated, it will loop through this array, spawn the required blueprints that has been stored in this zone and attach it to the zone. What this means is essentially if all these spawn and get attached to the zone, I now only have to move the zone and everything inside the zone with it because it's attached to it. This will save theoretically, see, this should save on event ticks being called, which is a big one, and hopefully replication because it should only have to replicate the zone movement and everything else will just be attached to it. That's my aim. future goals for this, well, generate a seed number, which will then feed into these and creating this array of blueprints. And for performance sake, this also allows me to, as the train's moving along, so say we get all the way to zone four, so we're actually here, I can then just remove this zone those zones going off in the future, I would spawn them as you're going along. Simple loading stuff. If I tackle this and get it, I can then essentially switch my entire focus, which is currently been on creating this loop of get to a station, passengers come on, or passengers go off, new passengers come on, get to the next station, continue. I can make that loop, make it as many times as I want, do it as long as you want. The train never actually moves. Everything outside the train moves. Looks pretty crisp. When I get that done, I can essentially switch my entire focus to be now on the train. Let me know if you enjoy these type of things. These more explanatory type deals. Not sure if it was good or not, but let me know. Um, I actually really enjoy talking about these kind of things. Uh, so if you do, and keep doing them. If you don't, I'll stick to just showing you essentially the highlights of my developments. But yeah, let's go do it. So that's what I did. I added in the movable zones, which was currently just the collision box that I could adjust the size of simply. And then I can just choose how many zones I wanted to spawn into the map. And it worked pretty well. It was really nice to see visually where each zone started and ended and also just how long the track was going to end up being. Then just made it that the first zone in the array would spawn a station and same with the last zone. From there made sure it was replicating correctly over a network and with all this done I was pretty happy with how things were taking shape. Though I did get kind of sick of seeing the plain sky as the skybox so I went into the Unreal Marketplace and got some awesome skyboxes for space and added them in. Now things are looking quite better. And that's that. Thank you so much for watching this. I just wanted to say that I didn't intend this next video to take as long as it did to come out. 
I have been suffering with some pretty nasty tension headaches these past few weeks that have been kind of just taking me out of action completely. I am recovering, so hopefully I'll be able to get back on schedule and bring the next video out quicker. Let me know if there is anything else you would like to see in these videos and what you think of the more rant-like explanations that I did in this video. And yeah, thanks again. Peace.